Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, it is a privilege, a privilege for me to end this 40 days off um, on the book, The Purpose Driven Life. And um, I hope that it has given you some insights and given you direction in life on the purpose of God in your life. We read at the end of this book in the last chapter that there are five purposes of God and five main questions that we should ask ourselves to be able to form and create our life purpose statement. This is a lot of info to cover in five minutes and I think it will be for everyone's own best interest to go and read this last two chapters again or listen to it over the audio book um, to really be able to absorb all of this info through taking notes to be able to understand everything that is conveyed. But I want to focus on the one theme that is like a golden thread that runs through this whole book and that is that at the end of the day God's purpose will prevail and that God is sovereign and that also means that his purposes is also sovereign and at the end of, at the end of the day he's got one purpose. I think that if we are to understand God's purpose we must first understand who God is. When we understand and have a clear understanding of the sovereignty of the God, of our God, our Father, we will live in His purpose with boldness and without fear. You see, the word in Hebrews 12 verse 2 says that we should be looking unto Jesus. Another translation says fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. We, when we fix our eyes on Jesus, that when we have a relationship with Jesus and when we understand who God is, that understanding will give us the, 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 the confidence and the foundation and that, and the sure and solid rock on which we stand in order to perform His purpose. You see, we can understand the purposes of God. We can understand the five purposes. We, can, we, could have, we could have written a beautiful life purpose statement. But at the end of the day, the enemy comes with distractions. And when we get distracted, and we are not looking unto Jesus or fixing our eyes on Jesus, having all our faith in what Jesus is, who Jesus is. He's the Son of God. He is God. What is done on the cross, that our sins are forgiven, that he paid the ransom for us. And if we, if, we, if, we, if we take our eyes off of Jesus, because the word says he's the finisher and the author, he's the, he's the, he's the author and the finisher of our faith. That, me, that word looking means to have undivided attention. Looking away from distractions in order to gaze on one object, to have eyes only for Jesus. You see, we can understand everything and we could have answered all the questions, but when we take our eyes off Jesus and fix it on another, on something else, when we fix it on ourselves, our own power, our own intellect, our own uh, strength, our own will, when we fix it on our own righteousness and we fix it maybe on a pastor or somebody else, we will fall. We will never be able to fulfill the purpose of God. We read the, at the end of this book that right at the end he says that everything is for God's glory. At the end of the day, we're going to be bowing at the throne of, of God before the throne of God with all the elders and all the angels. And we're going to be worshipping God because he has done his sovereign purpose. See, we must never allow pride and arrogance to creep into our hearts. 
when we start thinking that we are the ones that are doing it and we have arrived and we are there and um, uh, we, do, we, do, we, do not, we don't longer have to strive and we no longer have to fight the good fight. When we think and we start standing up in arrogance, that is when the purpose of God in our lives become crippled. That is when our vision starts getting blurred. That's when we start to, when we are starting to take our eyes off of Jesus. Romans 8 verse 28 says the following. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined, and who to, to be conformed to the image of his Son. That is the purpose. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? When we understand that we are called, that God has sovereignly, he has called us, he has selected you. you, you he, he's known you before you were formed in your mother's womb, before the foundation of the earth. You've got a solid rock. You've got a sure foundation. You will walk in his purpose for your life without fear. Romans 9 verse 16 says the following, it says, So then it is not of him who wills, nor of him who runs, but of God who shows mercy. And I want to tell you today, at the end of the day, it all comes down to one thing. And that is to keep your eyes on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his fullness and grace. May God bless you and may you be strengthened in the name of Jesus through your faith in him. Amen.